OK, so to uh, complete what the, the introduction to JavaScript that we started uh, on Tuesday, um, I just have to uh, uh, tell you a couple of, of details about the advanced features of the, of the of arrays, and then we can do some exercises, first on arrays, and then on strings after we see some of the details about the data structure. So the first hour or so uh, will be mainly of uh, hanging uh, and practical issues uh, uh, and doing some simple exercise just to, you know, uh, to warm up ourselves uh, on this new language. Um, so you remember the, what we said about arrays. Uh, we have a lot of methods that are classical methods for, um, for the basic uh, functions uh, or the operations that we need to do on, on arrays. Uh, plus there's some syntax, uh, special syntax, uh, okay, that uh, it turns out to be quite useful, especially when we see objects where the same syntax is applied, um, but we may introduce them there. So uh, when I create a, a new array, I'm going back uh, to the uh, normal syntax like this, uh, okay, I'm creating a variable of type array by picking some elements and uh, the name maybe structuring them into an array. So I'm creating a data structure. Hmm? So this uh, operation here is called the structuring, a set of values into an array, okay? Uh, JavaScript also supports uh, the reverse operation, which is called uh, destructuring. That's why the strange name. Uh, where you have a, an array-like syntax uh, on the left-hand side of an assignment here, both in an initialization or in a normal assignment, uh, where we are writing something that looks like an array. This means that uh, the assignment expects uh, to have an array from the right-hand side of the, of the assignment, uh, and uh, takes the elements that are structured inside the array and destructures them into single variables. Okay, so in this case, I have an array here. I'm not assigning the array to a variable, but I'm extracting the first element and putting that into variable x and extracting the second element and putting that into variable y. So it's like writing x equal to array zero and the first element, uh, and y equal to array two, uh, one, sorry, the second element. Mm? But we do that in one, uh, one just one instruction. And this is useful, for example, in the classical swap operation, where uh, I can create an array with two values from two variables, x and y, and assign them to another couple of variables uh, uh, in the reverse order, no? in a flipped order. And this is just creating an array just for the sake of transferring variables. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you can avoid uh, the, um, the temporary variable that you normally need when you try to swap two values. Mm -hmm. uh, so this works everywhere. I, I create an array with any, any means, uh, and I can extract the value. If I know how many they are, I can extract the, the values uh, into different variables in one single assignment, okay? And that's also a trick uh, for uh, defining functions uh, that return more than one value. So in the return statement of a function, we didn't see functions yet, but we can expect that there's a return statement that will return one value. If I want to return more than one value from the array, I can do that by creating an array. Sorry, if I want to return more than one value from the function, I can create an array that contains all the values and on the receiving side, I can just, uh, maybe this array doesn't make sense as an array. It's not a, a list of value, but there are different, uh, maybe a string and a number or a message like, like we have the score, not the, score, the number and the, um, uh, and then score and sum, you have the, the points and, and, the, and the honors degree. There are two, two values uh, for creating one, uh, one information. And so you can then extract them into separate variables. So it's uh, just, uh, you know, syntax, uh, but it becomes uh, even more powerful combined uh, with another strange operators, which is uh, three dots, uh, dot, dot, dot. It's called the uh, spread operator or the rest operator because it works in, in different ways on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side of the expression. 
What does it do is uh, to take, uh, let's start from the second part, which is easier, on the right hand side of an assignment. Uh, this, and this case is uh, working as a spread operator. It means that uh, it's taking an array and it's spreading its elements into the line where it, where it appears. So uh, if you don't have these three dots, okay, imagine you don't have these three dots, this would read as a, an array with a string, and the second element would be an array and then other two strings, okay? I have an array that would nest a second array. With the spread operator, we are not inserting the array, but we are extracting the elements from the array and inserting that into the lyrics array one by one, okay? We are, that's why the name is spread. We are spreading the contents of an array inside a bigger one, inside a larger contents. It's like, uh, as we had written the, the content or copied the contents of the second array inside the first one. So uh, spreading uh, takes uh, the structured data and convert that into a list of elements that you can use to create another structure, to pass uh, as argument to a function or uh, other, uh, in other contexts. Okay, so whenever you have a set of data packed and you need the, 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 um, the single values, you can spread them out in this way. It's like writing head, comma, parts zero, comma, parts one, comma, and the toes, and so on. Okay, uh, but uh, uh, in that case, we would, need, we would need to know that there are exactly two elements in the parts of that. With the spread, how many they are. Hmm? It works uh, with uh, any, any number of elements. And this is the spreading okay, uh, operation of, the, of this operator. On the left-hand side of the, uh, of the assignment, uh, usually we call it uh, the rest operator. So we are combining the destruction syntax we just saw in the previous slide with this spread operator, and we are assigning it to a destructure into two variables, x and y, an array of four elements that would not be valid normally. But we are using the spread operator on Y and saying uh, X will take the first element and Y will take the rest. So I will be, X will be a single value and Y will be an array with all the rest, the remaining elements that didn't fit before, that wasn't, uh, they weren't assigned uh, to X before. Huh? So it's an easy way well, uh, to extract the first element and separate it from the others. Okay, we already know how to do that. Okay, remember that extracting the first element and separating from the others, we already have the shift method. But shift modifies the array, deletes the first element from the array. This is just a an operator that assigns two variables to new variables uh, to some values that were part of a previous array, but the previous array is not modified. So it's more useful if you want to copy the values uh, without modifying the array itself. Hmm? And uh, this, this is working also in, uh, in different ways. You can use the spread operator at the end or at the beginning. So we'll take uh, everything except the last element, for example, or in the middle, so you are assigning the first and the last and then picking all the rest, or even more than one element at the side. So it's a, it's a way in some, in some cases to extract slices of sub, sub lists uh, of an array. And by the way, it gives a, a way of a, for a very frequent uh, syntax uh, that we can use when we want to copy to create a copy of an array, copying all the elements. A new array with the same elements uh, is just see here. Create a new array by building an array that contains uh, all the elements of A spread out. So it's like, you know, uh, uh, it, the same as I put, if I put inside the square brackets uh, one by one all the elements that previously were in A. 
So there are powerful operators uh, that come out in different, uh, say, different contexts. We will see that uh, this operator is also useful, uh, works also with objects and not just uh, array. We, we still don't have uh, met objects right now. And it's very, very useful to, to handle objects with an unknown uh, set of properties. I receive an object, I don't know which are the properties, but I want all of them and so on, or to want to unpack them, and this will be used a lot. Hmm? But that's for the future. Okay, so before studying strings, uh, let's make a, uh, some exercises, some simple exercises with, the, with arrays. Okay, so in the, in the course of the, of the semester, we, are, uh, we will work uh, together on building an application, as I mentioned uh, the first time, and this application would be a, you know, a stripped down version of, uh, you know, Stack Overflow, a question and answer website, just to have an idea. Okay, so for now we don't have the specifications yet. We'll start just after we do the basic uh, information about JavaScript. Uh, but uh, uh, the idea is that we are thinking about a website that is a hand handy set of users. These users can write questions and or can reply so give an answer to a question posed by some other people. And maybe these questions can be voted, or also the answers can be voted. So if you have in mind the, the, the functionality of Stack Overflow, we are trying to build something that has a subset of that functionality, okay? So just as, no, as, a, as a context, uh, we are uh, imagining some simple operation that would be useful in that context. Mm -hmm. Um, so the first uh, uh, exercise is uh, uh, about arrays. Uh, we manage the scores given to your user. Okay, so you have some scores uh, that other people give to you or to your questions, uh, and so we have to manage this list of scores. Just imagine that. Okay, it's just a fake uh, justification. And what we want to do is a set of uh, steps. Uh, Okay, just to play with the arrays. The first step is to define an array with all the scores that you received in chronological, in chronological order. Okay, and uh, we imagine, okay, to, to embed the scores directly in the source code because we don't know how to write them from a file or from a database yet. So we just write that in the code, this is the first step. And uh, uh, okay, these are the scores for your answers or questions. Uh, for the moment, we, we ignore the question, the answer, and, and all the, the other information. We only know that we got a, a three score on, a, on, a, on, on something, uh, on an answer that we gave. Just will be an array of numbers for the moment. Okay, we are just at the beginning. And then we want to make a copy of, the, of this array of numbers and do some operations on them. Okay? So let's first start with the program and then try to implement this function. So I created a score.js. Let me see if I can make it. Uh, I uh, remembered uh, to, uh, to write user strict as a first statement. Use strict semicolon mm -hmm. that will trigger strict mode. And uh, the text is asking us to Define an array with all the scores. So we define an array. We call it scores. And we can put some numbers. Uh, the text says that scores are integral numbers and they may be negative. So maybe we put, uh, it doesn't say about any, nothing, anything about the range 0 to 10, or minus 10 to plus 10, or minus 100 to 100. We don't know. It's not, it's not specified, so let's say from minus 10 to plus 10, for example. So I have a, I have a 5, I have an 8, I have a minus 2, I have a minus 9, I have a 4, another 5, another minus 2, and a 10, for example. Then I love semicolons, so I put them, but as, you, as, you, as we mentioned, they are uh, optional. Okay? So if I print it, just to, to see what we did, 
I have the terminal down, I go into the week one node. Uh, I, need, I, remember, I need to remember to save the file, I always forget, of course. And it's printing me the array hmm? on the console. Okay, fine. Then now we need to uh, manipulate this uh, uh, list of elements. Okay. Uh, we can also see the length okay, of this array, which is eight elements from zero number from zero to seven and so on. And for example, as we saw before, if we need to do some operation on the elements of the array, uh, we can iterate on that. Okay? So the iteration would be four, remember four of okay, four the e, the element. A single score of scores. And then we do something with score. Uh, there's an error here in the score variable because uh, we are in strict mode, uh, uh, the variable must be defined. Okay, so the error here is that score is not defined and I can define it in line here. I can define a new variable and the parenthesis, sorry. Okay, so when I, either the variable already exists because I use it for something else or I need to define it here. And then I can, I don't know, uh, I can print uh, console.log uh, the uh, score number uh, okay your score is is uh, plus score for example and then we'll spread the elements one by one uh, by the way, it could be surprising, but uh, uh, you can also define this score as a constant. And it will work because this variable is uh, redefined, reinitialized at every iteration. So uh, you know the score is changing, of course, no? because we are in a loop. It will take, but at every iteration, there's a new variable. And so inside this iteration, the variable doesn't need to change. It will only change on the next iteration where a new variable will be created. This is how it works. Okay, so uh, we can normally define also even the uh, indexes of, of loops as constants, as long as we don't need to modify the value inside the, the body of the function. That would be a bad idea anyway, okay? Uh, uh, modifying the, 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 the variable controlling a loop. Okay? Uh, it's a strange because from the syntax point of view, this variable is outside the braces, but uh, actually the scope of this variable is this set of, of braces, this body. It's injected inside the body. So at every iteration, we are redefining the const variable and it, we are picking the next element from the, from the array. So we see that we are using a lot const because we define a variable and then we use it uh, and if we need to modify, well, it, we seldom need to modify it. By the way, uh, I define scores as a constant. So can I write something like uh, scores, uh, uh, the first element was a five, I want to improve it to a six. Can I write this if scores is a constant? Yes. Yes, because we are not, uh, okay, now it's six. It, there's no conflict with the score being a constant uh, and modifying, we are not modifying scores, the variable. We are modifying a value inside the structure. Okay? What I cannot do is say, okay, well, scores uh, now is uh, an empty array. This will not work because I'm trying to 
to assign to a constant variable. So the const refers to the variable, not to the value assigned by, uh, referred by that variable. That's an important distinction to make. So I'm, I cannot reuse this variable for other purposes. Uh, this variable is bound to refer to that object uh, until it disappears. That object may be mutated, may change its content, in this case in arrays. So I cannot do that. Uh, I can add a new score, score dot scores the push minus nine, and this will work very well. But if I want to add a score, I need to use, for example, the push method. I could not use something like scores equal to maybe all the previous scores, and we add uh, three. Oh, this is a perfectly legal syntax. We are using the spread operator as before. But it doesn't, it's not compatible with scores uh, being a constant. We have the same problem here. Assignment to constant variable at line, uh, where is it? 20, and um, where's the line number? Here, line eight. Call the yes line, line eight, here. Okay, because in, in the difference between this push and this other assignment is that this is a method that mutates the content of an object. In the other case, we are creating a new object by reusing the contents of an, of an already, uh, already existing object and reassigning the new object to a variable. Okay, the problem is that that variable is already assigned and is a const. So what phase is the assignment to the variable? If I send it to a different variable, even a const one, no problem. Okay, so what we are protecting with const is not the values that we put into the array, but the fact that the scores is bound to point to that array. And if we have in mind the object model, we will always be clear in our mind whether we are creating a new object by reusing or copying content of an existing one or mutating an object in place. Hmm? Yes? Between, sorry? Uh, yeah, the difference between, if, so the difference between this and that, for example, let, okay, in, if I had declared this as let, uh, this uh, would be okay. All of these would be okay. Because I can mutate the content, or I can reassign the variable to another content. Uh, so the only difference you see is when you are assigned the variable, scores equal. Basically, with const, you cannot equal that variable anymore to anything else. The variable, you can equal, as I assign the single elements. Yes, this can be done. We are, I'm not changing score. I'm changing the second element of score. But changing score is something that uh, is forbidden is, if, is the variable, if the variable is a const, okay? This makes us, for just a, it's not uh, a big issue, but uh, it's just making a habit. Let's take the habit of declaring everything as const uh, so that we can explicitly think when we need uh, to mutate it. I, I'm making all this fuss about mutation because in JavaScript there will be a lot of asynchronous behaviors, okay? And so having some data structure which is m mutating asynchronously with respect to your code uh, always creates trouble. So we need to be aware of where it happens or where we are making it happen. Okay. Uh, sorry, this I need to be commented because it doesn't work. So what do we need to do with these uh, scores that we just mangled? Eliminate all the negative scores. 
so we want to make a duplicate of the array and in this duplicate eliminate all negative scores okay so we need to make first of all a copy of the array uh, copy scores or maybe in JavaScript we like better the or scores too do you like it a copy of scores so now let's reflect about the difference between this and that so scores two was used for like that okay let's say three so they didn't call. okay so we make a copy of an array we so we create a new variable scores two or three in the first case we are not copying the array we are just copying the reference so actually scores two and three are the same array if we modify scores two we are actually also modifying scores okay so this is not what we want the text calls us for duplicating the array making a copy a separate copy that we can modify without modifying the original one okay so the first one is not good um, just a reference not a copy the second one is the one of the possible syntaxes uh, that we can use to create uh, a new array with the same contents as the previous one it's what we call a shallow copy okay uh, we're just copying the first layer of elements and uh, there are clues okay an open square bracket means uh, this is a new array whenever you open a bracket you are creating an array this is a new statement okay and uh, so it's very easy to see whether you are just copying references or creating objects square bracket creates an object hmm? on the right hand side of the assignment and we store it here then we need to manipulate this variable scores three I declare it const uh, even if I know that I will be changing the contents uh, but it's, it's okay we can do that we just saw that we can do that eliminate all negative scores uh, we will learn how to do that in, a, in, a, in one line of code uh, when we deal with the uh, functional programming with the filter method okay but it will need us some time to get there for now we can do that with a normal old-fashioned for, for, for loop okay so uh, well I see two, two possible stupid algorithms for doing that uh, iterate over the array and if you find something negative just delete it how can you delete an element from an array there's a splice method hmm? remember splice maybe you don't from a, an array from a position remove a, a number of elements and then in that position add other elements optionally hmm? so one possibility could be to iterate over the scores for uh, score const score of you, you should fight writing in always of score three score three if a score less than zero do something not this go away please can I can I disable it no there was an option to disable it for the I sorry I didn't uh, okay anyway just ignore this stupid guy um, I if the story is less than zero we must remove it 
but uh, in, the, in this context, I, we can do it because we don't know, with, a, with this kind of for loop, uh, we don't know the position. We know that the score is a minus two, but we know, know where it is, uh, because in this for, we don't have the index of the variable, right? Uh, so we need to do a traditional old style loop uh, with the uh, integer indexes because we need the index of the element that we want to delete, right? So that would be a uh, const i equal to zero, uh, i less, oh, this is right, huh? i less the scores dot length, uh, increment i. And now it's not score minus zero, but scores three, index i. And at this point, we can delete the element uh, at index i. So it could be a scores three dot splice index i one element. We are pulling it out. And then let's see if it works. Ah, sorry. We are incrementing i, so it should be a, a variable, a variable variable, so not a constant variable. With all side loops, uh, we are actually modifying the same variable, not reassigning a new element. So we have this score. Let's uh, maybe remove this loop, uh, which is only creating noise. We have the first. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, okay. So we have the first element here, uh, the initial scores, uh, and the modified scores there, where we removed uh, all the negative scores. It's not true. What happened? Why didn't we remove all the negative scores? Yep. Yep. Yes. Hmm. You get it? Uh, yeah, I removed the two, the minus two here from index number two, zero, one, two. When I do the splice, I actually remove this, uh, this element. And the minus nine, which originally was at index three, now is back at index two. But I'm incrementing the i, and so position two will not be looked at again. And I will skip to position three, that now is the four. So actually, every negative number that follows another negative number will be skipped. Um, so there are ways around that. For example, if I do that, I will decrease i. And so I can say, okay, if I'm deleting something, let's stay on this position. Hmm? Uh, it's not very readable code, is it? No, playing with the index of a loop uh, is something that always gives me shivers. Um, so we we know. There are many ways around that, okay? But the, it's not the first thing of programming, but one of the first one is uh, don't modify a data structure while you are iterating that. I'm iterating an array, don't touch it. Don't modify the array, you can modify the values, but adding or removing elements from a data structure that I'm currently iterating over is looking for trouble. Okay, so we can do that, of course. So this is one, one, uh, one solution. Find control of the index. Uh, the other solution would be looping from the end. Okay, I start from the end of the array and go towards the beginning. And so that this wouldn't be a problem. Uh, or, yeah, basically these are the, these two options. Or we just uh, forget about uh, Modifying the elements, we just create another array with only the elements that we like. Hmm? So the other possibility, which is simpler, is say, okay, uh, const, uh, let's call it positive scores. Would be an empty array that we can populate uh, for 
or const uh, score of scores three. Uh, if uh, scores is greater than zero, oh sorry, greater than or equal than zero because it takes to eliminate the negative ones, not the null ones, uh, and then we can positive scores dot push score or singular, and so we can write. Uh, The positive scores. Let's comment this one and see what happens. Uh, what did I print here? Ah, oh, sorry. Let's forget about that. Okay. So this is the. New array where we only have positive values. It's moving towards the functional programming where we never modify the structure. We always create one that is different from the previous one. Okay, but it's not uh, it's not mandatory. This is uh, actually we are using you know, the the looping and the, and the methods of the array instead of uh, playing with the elements uh, themselves in a way. Um, and uh, but we also must remember to to remember the number of cores that have been deleted. This n n number. Okay. Oh, sorry. What is an n? Is the number of, of of elements that we didn't delete. So we can count them into into the loop, uh, or maybe it's easier to say that uh, n n and the number of negative const. Uh, and then is equal to the length of the array that we had at the beginning minus the length of what we had at the end. Okay, so it's the scores three dot length minus positive scores dot length. How many did we delete? The difference between the two lengths. Eliminate the two lowest ranking scores. So the, we did the first step. How can we do the second step? Hmm? Uh, so we have in this case the two lowest ranking scores uh, are four and five. And we want to remove them. So the first idea that we have in mind is to try to sort this array. And then the two lower scores uh, would be the first and the second place. Hmm? And we have some surprise for us because there's a sort method. It's here. So let's try. It sorts the elements of the array in place. So it doesn't modify the array. We just, mod uh, sorry, it doesn't create a new array. It modifies the current one. Okay, so it means positive scores dot sort. And let's see what comes out of this sorting. Then we can just splice away the first two elements. Hmm? Okay, let's try it. This is the result of the sorting, which is surprising uh, because this sorting takes place between strings. It's an array of numbers, but by default, JavaScript will convert this number to strings and then sort uh, the list of strings. It's not my fault. That's the way it is. So uh, the sort method cannot be just used like it is out of the box. We need to learn how to give uh, a sorting criteria to the sort method. Say sort, but not by comparing string. I will give you a comparison function to work with. Okay? 
So that's something that we'll learn very soon when we learn how to define function. The sort method accepts as a parameter one function, which is the comparison function. So we can control how to compare numbers versus strings versus other, other sorting criteria that you know, we may need uh, to implement. So this is just an example just to, just to, you know, to imprint in our minds uh, sort equal string order. If you don't want the string order, you must select the sort criteria, and we'll know how to do that next week. Hmm? Not a problem. So right now, we cannot use this, uh, this solution because uh, sort uh, uh, implements uh, a string ordering. Uh, whatever. So we have to well find, for example, uh, the minimum value of an element and then delete that. We need no, the lowest number uh, of a of an array, and let's find the minimum. So the minimum. Uh, uh, let's try to take the first element. Uh, okay, and uh, okay. Let's iterate. No, not the minimum, but the position of the minimum. Let's see. Let's imagine it's zero. And then let's iterate over the array for let i equal to zero, i less than positive scores of length. Okay, this was correct. Okay. Okay, I find the position of the minimum of this array. I am iterating over the length of the array, and every time I find a number in position i which is less than the number in the position that I guessed, uh, I update that, right? And then I can remove that element. I have this its location i, sorry, post mean position minimum. I can just delete it. So right now I can use posit positive scores splice from the position of the minimum one element. So right now I can see that from these positive elements, uh, I found that in the second position we have a four and the four has been deleted. And if we want to remove the two uh, smallest ones, uh, we need to repeat this uh, twice. So let's, uh, let's make a loop. Uh. And we just repeat all of this. And up to the splice, twice. Uh, what did I do wrong? Line 42. Okay, again, sorry. It was, okay, that's what we get. This is ugly code, uh, and we see that when we learn, uh, the would be example that when we learn functional programming and so on, uh, we will revisit this and rewrite that into one statement. Hmm? So that uh, it also has, helps us from moving from the let's say, mentality of working with C or other languages to uh, JavaScript where we can learn how to exploit and also understand why the language contains some, some st sometimes strange structures that they will really help. Okay, this is not very nice code here, but it works. And finally, sorry, uh, we add the uh, new scores, and, as, and so I deleted NN elements that were the negative ones. I deleted two more, so in total I deleted NN plus two elements, uh, 
and now I want to um, replace them or to add the new elements uh, with a value equal to the average of this scores uh, at the end. So right, right now I deleted, uh, uh, I had nine, I have three right at the end, uh, so I deleted six elements. I need to add six elements at the end with a value equal to the average of this, uh, or they will be all A's in this case. So I need to find the average. Okay, it's easy. Let average equal to zero. Uh, and then I, let's iterate. Uh, Okay, that's good. Over all the positive scores, let's compute the the, the sum and then the average. Uh, is, we divide it. Uh, average divided from the length of the array. It's just assuming that we have we have at least one element left. We we are not checking. Okay if the list still contains uh, enough, more, zero, uh, more than one element, at least one element, more than zero. Otherwise, this will be a division by zero. Hmm. Okay, and uh, so at this point, we have this average and we can add to the end of the array, so a lot of pushes of this average value. For how many times? Uh, N plus two, okay? Or const count equal to zero. Let again um, count less than n n plus two. Count increment. Let's uh, positive scores dot push the average. So let's see what we have at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the same elements as before with all eights. Uh, these are integers because by chance six and eight and ten give it an average of uh, an average of uh, of um, of, a, of integer values. If we modify one of the scores, uh, for example, instead of ten we have only nine, then the average will not be integer anymore. So six, eight, nine, and then the average which is seven dot uh, sixty six. Uh, the text calls for rounding the value. Okay, it says, okay, add the, 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 the scores must be integral values, so you need to round them. How to round them? With the mathematical function. Okay, so let's go back uh, to our slides with all the math uh, functions. And we have uh, a truncate function here, for example, or a round function there. Truncate towards truncate towards zero and uh, round truncate to the nearest integer. Math dot round. And uh, here it says rounded, so go away. So in the average, when we do the division, we should round the result. Uh, math dot round of this expression. And now 7.66 is rounded to 8. Okay, so very basic operation just to get familiar with this data. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's move on if there are any questions or let's move on to see the other important data type uh, 
which are strings. Okay, strings in uh, JavaScript are sequences of characters, and they are by default uh, Unicode strings. Okay, so they can contain any character in the Unicode alphabet. We are not limited to one byte characters. And they are immutable objects. So immutable means uh, that unlike arrays where you can modify one element inside an array or you can add uh, or delete an element from the array itself, uh, once a string is defined, it cannot be changed. The only way to and what changed the content of a string is to create a new one to which we are applying some modification. Okay, this makes programming much simpler. Well, this immutability of strings uh, is the same uh, that you find in Python, the same that you find in Java, so probably you're already familiar with that. Huh? Uh, there are no methods uh, available to modify the content of a string, and you cannot assign a single character to a single position. Hmm? Uh, for any other purpose, uh, a string is just thing, you can think of it as, a, as, a, as an array of characters, so it's a zero indexed uh, list of elements. Uh, um, when I say character, actually, uh, it's an, an abstract concept because in uh, um, JavaScript there are no character data types. Okay? A single character is a string. It's a string of length one, of course. And a string is a string of length, a sequence of characters of length uh, greater than one. So there is no char as a data type. As we saw this, the set of types, uh, we have number and string. That's it. Hmm. Um, and uh, okay, we already saw that we can use single or, or double quotes, uh, and it's very convenient. What can we do with strings? Well, extract one character, one and this single character will be a string of length one, uh, we can create a new string with concatenation, uh, or extract the length. Just remember the length is a property, it's not a, a method, so there are no uh, braces after that. And there are no methods for modifying strings, uh, but there are methods for creating new strings from starting from existing ones, okay? So, well, char at is particularly useless because it's the same as extracting the index. I mean, char at zero is the first character and so on. Index of and last index of are the search methods. Index of searches uh, a string for a smaller substring inside and where it gives you the index where the substring is found. So searching a substring inside the string. Searching from the left, from the beginning, or from the end of the string. Uh, start with, end with, includes our Boolean method that will tell us whether a, a given string has, okay, the starting, the first character or the last character equal to another one, or includes somewhere inside. Hmm? Uh, concat is the same as this plus operator, hmm? just written as a method, but. Uh, um, split is very powerful. Let's skip that uh, because it's playing with Unicode uh, numbers. Split is uh, uh, splits the strings into an array. So when you have a, a list of uh, elements separated by comma, for example, in a in a string, you call the split method, and it will give you an array of strings that correspond to the different parts. Of that. That's very useful for mending the input and so on. Slice extracts a substring. So it gives you a new string, which is a substring of, a, of the previous one from start to end position. They always return new values, okay? There is no splice in, like in arrays because you cannot modify the string, so that nothing that we can be deleted or inserted in place. Um, slice and substring are the same. These three functions do the same purpose. Extracting a substring, they differ in the type of parameters they receive. One gets the first and last character indexes, uh, and the other gets the first and the length. Mm -hmm. 
for historical reason they were they are all there they are redundant because they do the same thing uh, these uh, functions here work with regular expressions regular expression are uh, um, a predefined type of data in JavaScript so uh, there's also a special syntax for that and so there are methods for matching searching replacing uh, using regular expression I don't want to delve into that okay because uh, resorting to regular expression is just the, the last resort when <laughs> when everything has face, but uh, uh, okay, very stupid uh, lowercase and uppercase methods. Uh, uh, repeat is quite, can be useful to repeat a string many times. Uh, and trim is very useful to remove uh, white space at the beginning and the end of the string. So you have a string with, with extra spaces at the beginning, the leading spaces or the training spaces, you can remove that in trim. Always remove them means uh, we don't change the string, we create a new one with the spaces removed, okay? It's, a, it's an immutable method. Um, okay, this is just a warning that uh, since the strings are Unicode characters, uh, the representation of Unicode is a, is a different uh, number of bytes uh, per character depending on the character, okay? So the, um, the consequence is that the length in byte of a string is not equal to the length in characters of the string itself. Mm -hmm. But unless we are doing binary input output, uh, we, we don't normally care about that. And then we have some special <coughs> type of string, which uh, they call them template literals. Mm -hmm. That's the name that the JavaScript manual gives. Uh, that are strings uh, where we can interpolate, insert some value uh, that's why they are called templates. Uh, it's a template of a string, but this template will be customized with the actual values of some variables. Uh, so, for example, I write, uh, and these template literals are uh, surrounded by backticks or left apostrophe or grave accents, uh, depending on how we want to call it. If you have a, uh, an Italian keyboard, it's nearly impossible to write it. But um, and the idea is that inside the template literal, you can put some expression surrounded by dollar brace. And uh, when the, this line is executed, the value of this variable or an expression, even more complicated than a single variable, is evaluated in that moment. Uh, and the result is converted to string uh, and uh, inserted into the literal itself. So it's very useful for printing something. Uh, um, before knowing that, for we had to print, uh, what's that? Here. By concatenating a, a piece of a string or a piece of a variable and so on, all of this can be just replaced uh, by, by string literal. In that case, I can decommend that and I could just write backtick your score is a dollar brace score. Hmm? Convenient and readable. No? Uh, we use it a lot. Uh, whenever we, whenever we, we print something, the default will be this one. Uh, okay, so they are quite simple the data type. Since they are not mutable, we don't have all the problems of const versus let cannot be muted so mutated so there's no uh, nothing we can do with a const uh, string so uh, let's say some let's see some exercise uh, on the on strings that is written here uh, let's all we're always in the idea of our uh, fake uh, um, uh, Stack Overflow website. It costs us for managing the list of users in a website. Okay, let's imagine we define the name of users as a comma separated list. And uh, here we have an example that we can just co copy and paste uh, with, the, with the list of the teachers uh, of these courses. Okay, so we have the const uh, users as this string. 
this is a string with name sorry how many quotes do we have here okay um, the names that are separated by by comma hmm? okay what do I need to do pass the string and create an array containing one name per array position so I want an array with the first name in the first position the second name in the second position and so forth so this is easy to do with a with a split operation okay so this was the users user array is just a users dot split and the split function uh, let's see the documentation splits a string into substring using the specified separator and returns them as an array a separator can be a string or a regular expression no? if we want to make it difficult so the separator here should be a comma Uh, and uh, we see that uh, it creates uh, a user array uh, containing the, na the names uh, split at the comma position. Okay, so it's just a simple split statement. The only issue is uh, the spaces around the names. Uh, because uh, you see that, uh, the, okay, if you split at the comma, then the space will be part of the next name. Uh, somebody suggested uh, to, to split on uh, the comma space sequence, which in this specific case will work, uh, but I feel it is a bit dangerous because the specification of the, of the text uh, says that the users are a comma separated list it doesn't require spaces to be there they are there in this example but if we remove a space here and it's legal to do that because the specification calls for a some comma separated list not for a comma separated list of names uh, surrounded by spaces and so it won't it won't work anymore and also if i put two spaces here and uh, one space there or two it is still a comma separated list of names uh, but is uh, the number of spaces and their position is uh, random it's arbitrary so it's not we cannot just catch it by splitting on something that contains space a separator is something and a surrounder is something else so let's be happy with what, what split does. And in this case, I added or removed the spaces in different places. So I have something that looks ugly. But we can remove the spaces very easily with a trim function. Right? So we can trim every string. And trim method uh, um, remove the starting and stopping and ending the spaces. So I need to do a An iteration that will change, will re, uh, replace every string with its string version. So for let i equal to zero, i less than the length of user array. Okay, this is right. What do we need to do here? i equal to zero. What do we need to do here is to user array i equal to user array i this the trim trim let's see how can we trigger the documentation remove the leading and trailing white space and line terminator characters from a string so if there's space in the middle they stay there if they are at the beginning of the end they are removed hmm? and you see that uh, the trim is also there are no, variants that are trim end and trim start if, if you only want to trim one side of the string itself. So user array i is the i element of the list. Dot trim 
returns a new string uh, that will be trimmed, uh, and this new string must replace the old one inside the array. So in this case, I should see a cleaner set of names without spaces before or after. So I'm, I'm more robust because I can parse a string uh, even if it, it has or it doesn't have spaces uh, before and uh, before or after each name. Okay. Um, create a second array by computing the acronyms of the people as the initial letters of the name. Acronyms should be in all capital letters. So, what do we say? Okay, this the first name is uh, Luigi De Russis, uh, and uh, the acronym is LDR. The second is Luca Manella, so the acronym will be LM. The third one will be FC, and the fourth one will be JPSM as a string. So, the stupid exercise on strings. For every name, we should construct a new string that only contains the initial letters and then put them in uppercase. Well, they are already in uppercase, but just to be sure, it should be in all capital letters. So, how can we do that here? Okay, these are something that we do item by item. So let's loop over the names and create uh, the an array of, of acronyms. So const acronyms is an empty array. And let's populate it one by one by computing them. Okay, so uh, we iterate uh, over the names. Uh, so not const, for const name of uh, user array. brace, uh, what do you want to do? We co want to compute the acronym, let's say, uh, const acronym uh, equal to something, okay, and then acronyms dot push uh, Acronym dot push at the end uh, the acronym itself uh, acronym and then just for being sure we have put in uppercase to uppercase okay this is what we want to do uh, to create a new uh, array of strings and of course the work to do here is uh, to create this acronym. But now we are down to one single, to manipulating one single string. So how do we identify the initial letters uh, of a word? By searching for spaces, right? So we can, uh, Okay, we know that the string doesn't contain any, that doesn't start with the space. So much we've been, we, we made sure of it uh, before. So the first character of the string will be the first character of the acronym, that's for sure. Then, if there are spaces into the string, then the next character would be another letter of the acronym, unless there are two or more consecutive spaces, and then the next character will not be a letter in that case. So this means that the, the naive algorithm will be, let's start with an acronym equal to the first letter of the name, name zero, and they need to add new elements to this so I know is not a const. I'm building it 
And I cannot do like an array, define it const, and then push to the values, because I cannot mutate the string. I really need to redefine this, the variable. Huh? So I really need the let here. The only way of modifying acronym is to define, to redefine the variable to point a new object, to a new object. That's why, that's because it's, in, it's uh, immutable. Hmm? Okay, and then we can search for, for spaces. And uh, for, let's say, let's try from the second character on, uh, let uh, i equal to one. Don't spoil it, please. Uh, i until the end. Okay, what do we do here? Uh, we find if uh, we find if we have a space, go away. If we have a space, name position i is a space. Then the next letter, the next character, would be the initial, unless. The next letter, the next character is also space. Okay, this means and name i plus one is not a space. At that point, uh, acronym uh, equal acronym. I concatenate at the end plus name i plus one. Right? So I, in my strings, uh, I don't have any double or triple spaces. But if I had, I'm protecting myself from that. Basically, what I'm saying is I'm looking for a character that uh, is not a space, uh, but it follows a space. Uh, I'm not worried about this i plus one. I'm not checking for i plus one. No, you could run out of the string. No, I don't, because I'm sure that the string doesn't end with the space. So if I find the space here, that I'm sure that the next character exists, because the space cannot be the last character. Okay, so I didn't uh, forget that. No. I'm sure that if I Contains, if position i contains a space, then position i plus 1 exists. I'm not sure of that. Uh, let's see how that works. Yeah? They seem correct? Don't they? And let's try to add some extra spaces so that uh, we make it, it more difficult for our algorithm. But it should be robust enough to withstand it. Um, there's another way of doing the same, of getting the same result. Now, instead of searching for spaces by hand, character by character, we could use a split. We could uh, take the name as split of spaces. Okay? So we could exploit uh, names, uh, uh, sorry, user array. No, na uh, no, so it's there. I need to do that into inside the loop, sorry. Just to see what may happen. Console.log name dot split. So in this loop, instead of doing the for for computing the acronym, oh sorry, name dot split, I need to put the separator space. So for each name here, we are printing. The name splitted, also in this case of Luca Manella, where there are only one space, uh, it was it nicely split. So it, we can take the first letter of every element of the array. 
If there are extra spaces, uh, what does uh, the split function do? Well, if I have uh, three spaces here, it will find that there is a word, then split on this space, then we have an empty string, then the space is a separator, another empty string, another separator. So it will give us the empty string, empty string, Rustus. That will give me here. Luigi, the empty string, empty string, Rustus. Because the consecutive sequence of separators means that there are empty strings separated from each other. But I can easily check for those. I only take the first character of the strings that are not empty. That's it. Or the alternative is not to use a space as a separator, but using a regular expression saying uh, one or more spaces. And in that case, it will, it will consider any sequence of spaces as a separator. So there are, of course, different ways of doing the same. What we could try to learn uh, as much as we as we learn more, as I say more constantly, we are writing right now. We are writing JavaScript uh, as people who don't know JavaScript, okay? Because we are thinking in a mixture of C or Java, because that's our basic understanding of JavaScript. When we learn more features of the language, uh, we see that all of these loops uh, will disappear, and we replace them by with split and filter and map operations. Uh, that uh, will be much more compact. And let's do the looping. Uh, uh, let's uh, let the compiler do the looping and not our code. Okay? But that's uh, what we are going to learn basically ne next week. Okay, so we are a bit late, uh, but uh, you know why at the beginning uh, for the projector issue. And uh, we can now have a break, uh, unless there are some questions. And after that, we start digging into objects, which are another nice feature of JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, have uh, 15 minutes of break. Is it okay?